Good morning or afternoon, everyone. My name is Mariela Salinas, and I'm a marketing specialist here at Educate 360. Welcome to today's webinar, The Ultimate Guide to Passing Your CPAP and CCBA, presented by our fantastic instructor for today, Dr. Susan Heidorn. We are using Zoom for today's session, and we will be sharing a copy of this recording with you in an email after the webinar. We do encourage participation throughout the webinar, so please use the chat or the Q&A option for our short Q&A portion after the presentation. All righty, without further ado, Educate360 is so excited to present this webinar today, so I will now hand it over to you, Dr. Susan. Thank you so much. Um, good morning, or I was going to say good morning, everyone. It's afternoon it's for, for some of you. I am actually in Hawaii, so aloha, everyone. I know it's it's a hardship that some of us have to bear, but <laughs> still working. But, you know, when you're working in paradise, it's not bad. So let's get to the uh, topic at hand. We are talking about the ultimate guide to passing your CBAP and CCBA. <clears throat> so today I will hopefully give you some tips as you consider um, getting your certification, or maybe you're in the middle of it and, and want a few more tips, and hopefully you'll have some takeaways from this class. So why on earth would we want to get our CBAP and CCBA certification? Because it does take time to study. Well, one, of course, is professional recognition, you know, that, yes, I've got my, I've got my certification. I'm, I'm good to go, you know, and, and I always put my certifications underneath my name when I do my emails and everything. So it just, you know, a little bit of recognition that I did some hard work in order to get them. Uh, certainly career advancement. I know there's organizations I work with that uh, you have to have your PMP or you have to have your CBAP and uh, to move to that next level, right, to um, advance in your profession. So that's always nice to have your certification. Certainly enhancing your knowledge. You know, um, I, as I was studying for my certification, certainly learned a lot more than I, I did at, at the beginning. So it's like, hmm. And if there was some other topics I wanted to get more detail in, I I'd, I'd just drill further. So that's always kind of nice. Certainly networking opportunities. You can, you can join a class or a study group. A lot of the people in my CBAP certification classes, we do CBAP and CCBA together. Let's keep networking with each other. They said, hey, can I keep connected? You know, can we make a study group? I mean, a lot of them do that. So great networking opportunities. Certainly, if you're looking for a job, it gives you a competitive advantage over someone who does not have their certification. And then just giving you more confidence, like, you know what, I know, I know this. I, I have this down, you know, and so so the client is more comfortable with you, um, stakeholders are more comfortable with you, and you're more comfortable with, yeah, I, I do know this stuff. And then just, you know, being able to have global mobility around. And then um, the employer gets um, a deal too, because they say, yeah, our people are certified. So that just makes them look better too. You're helping enhancing their brand of having qualified employees. So kind of thinking about why do you want to get your certification? And this is really kind of key because it is not one of those exams you can just take a week and just say, okay, I, I'm I'm good, I'll take it. Generally, unless you, unless you have a couple of weeks of vacation, that's all you do, is it does take time to study. And I'll, we'll talk about that as we move forward. So to, for me, when, when I'm getting a certification, I have to, to be motivated because there's so many other fun things in life to do besides study for a certification. What is my motivator? You know, what's going to keep me going? No, I got to get through this. I got to get through this. This is good. So just kind of think about why you want to get your certification to keep your motivation up. Like I said, there's a lot of other things to do <laughs> besides study. Okay, how do you stack up? Let's take a look at that. Um, CBAP was actually created in 2006 and CCBA, which is interesting because um, it is more of a lower level um, certification. I'm going to say lower level. That's probably a bad term, but you need less experience. And that came out in 2011. So the CBAP itself, current CCBA, season BAs, you have to have 7,500 hours in the past 10 years. That's a lot. And it's also 10 years ago. <laughs> I'm lucky if I remember what I did yesterday. So we'll give you actually a template to help you capture your work hours. 
Uh, CCBA, of course, needs 3750 in the past seven years. Um, and these are important because if you're not eligible, you're not going to be able to take the, the exam. You need a minimum of 900 hours in four of the knowledge areas if CBAP and 900 hours in two of the knowledge areas or, or 500 in four of them. Um, and we'll talk about what the knowledge areas are in a second. Professional development, that means that you have to have hours to sit before before you sit for the exam. And it, and it has to be instructor-led or somehow you interact with the instructor that you have that opportunity. Our, our classes give you that, our certification classes automatically give you that, and so do most <clears throat> organizations. But if you don't and you say, gee, you know what, I just want to self-study, make sure that you have some at least 35 hours of business analyst classes because it does have to be a class that is taught by an instructor. It can't be just doing um, learning on your own. I'm, I read a book about business analysis or I read the, C, uh, the BA book. It does have to be kind of instructor led. So they're kind of picky about that. Um, two references, we'll talk about that in a second and code of conduct. Um, minimum, you just need your high school education. You don't need any college education. And then you can see the fees there. There is an application fee as you fill out all your information. And then there's exam fee. That first number is for members. The second number is for non-members. So here are the knowledge areas that I was just talking about that you have so many hours in each knowledge area. There are six knowledge areas. And uh, you can see kind of the top one is business analysis, planning and monitoring. So, so how do we plan for our business analysis work? We're not planning for the project, planning our work. How do we monitor it and manage it and do improvement? Um, elicitation, how do we elicit requirements and collaborate with our stakeholders? I'm going to go through this really quickly, but it'll at least give you kind of an introduction. Um, certainly requirements, life cycle management. This, these outer ring ones are kind of support um, knowledge areas. So um, once we elicit the requirements, we have to manage them in whatever form, whether it's an, in Agile or Waterfall or anything else. And then these core circle areas, knowledge areas, and these are buckets. So as you're studying for the CBAP or CCBA, Think of them as buckets of common things, you know, elicitation. There's a ton of elicitation techniques, okay? That's all put in the elicitation bucket. So it's things that don't necessarily, um, well, how do I want to put that? So the inner ring is um, the things that we do, and those are also buckets, but they, they're not sequential. I think that's what I want to say. They're not sequential. So as you are studying, realize these are things you have to do, but they're not necessarily sequential. You don't have to do one before the other. There's some things that are, but a lot of it is not. You can do it concurrently, or you can do it um, you can do it sequentially. You can do one before the other. You can do it simultaneously. I mean, it just depends on what you're doing. Uh, strategy analysis is certainly that pre-project work. This is where we define the business need, analyze the current state, get to the future state, suggest and recommend solutions. Requirements analysis and design definition is where we take those requirements that we elicited and document them and model them and um, make sure everybody understands them. And then solution evaluation is kind of your post-project work. You know, towards the end of the project, maybe it's um, putting a pilot or a bit, you have a beta or alpha that you want to look at, or once it's implemented, and this is ensuring that we got the value we thought we were going to get. So just very briefly, those are the areas that, one, you need experience in. So when you're filling out your applications, like, okay, you don't want to put any project management stuff in there. You don't want to put any... QA testing, because that's another hat you're wearing. So it's helpful as you are filling out the application and making sure it passes that you understand those knowledge areas and making sure that you have uh, the hours you need. So that's just kind of give you a little bit overview. So let's say you want to apply for the exam, yay. Um, first of all, I would suggest downloading 
go to IIBA.org first. They have a lot of standards and handbooks. And so then you'll go down to CBAP handbook or the CCBA handbook, and it'll tell you everything you need from an IIBA perspective. Okay. And so it'll help you to say, oh, where do I log my hours in? Uh, where do I start filling out my application? And so it'll give you information. They update it from time to time. So um, it is really good to look at the latest and greatest. And then to fulfill your eligibility requirements, we just talked about that, is, of course, get your 35 for CBAP and 21 for CCBA. Get those professional hours. We talked about that. Work history. Make sure all your work history aligns to those six knowledge areas I just talked about. Use those terms. So there's no question about whether you were doing BA work. And a lot of times you're probably doing BA work without realizing you're doing business analysis work, um, but making sure that at, because they're going to look at it from their perspective, use the terms and use the words that they use in the BA box. So there's no question. They don't have to say, well, I don't think this is really BA work. No, nope, it, it's listed right there. Um, two references. You need two references. Now, only if you're audited will they check your references but you still have to give them two. Now, this is kind of a little bit trickier. It has to be a, a reference can be a CBAP, another CBAP, or it can be your um, performance uh, review manager, whoever gives you your performance review, wh whoever you report to, or if your consultant, like I was, can be a client. But here's the caveat. They have to have known you for six months. I know when I teach class, I get really close to my students, and they go, Susan, can you be a reference? I would love to be a reference, but they're not going to allow me to be a reference unless I've known you for six months. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're filling out references. Um, because you go back seven years or 10 years for CBAP, we have an application worksheet. So go into Watermark Learning and the resource templates. You do have to sign, sign in and get a passcode and everything. Um, it's free don't have to pay anything for it. But there's a template out there that really helps you start bringing in the information. Um, what happens when you just go online to do it? And let's say, you know, you put, you're putting in your hours and you're putting in your experience. And then all of a sudden your boss calls and you need to, you know, zip. And because it's 10 years and it is a lot, and then I go back and I go, gee, did I put that in or did I not put that in? You know, and so then I might do I accidentally duplicate my work. Well, they're going to take that right out. They're going to subtract that from my hours when I think I have enough hours. And I even did this. I so I filled out the application worksheet. Everything is there. I can check it off as I put it in. I also it also calculates to make sure you have the right hours. So it's really, really a nice template. Uh, and then, of course, I'm sorry to say you have to pay for the application. They do have an application fee. Uh, log in your eligibility details, um, which is above. And you have to agree to your code of conduct um, so that you're being a good BA, an ethical BA, and also um, agree to the terms and conditions and submit your application. Voila. It, it is an effort, I'm going to say. Some, some people tell me it's it's more daunting than the exam. <laughs> so that's why our worksheet helps. So uh, then you, when you submit it, you will receive an email from IIBA shortly saying, have you been approved? If you've been approved, then you, then you can start uh, paying for the exam and signing up for the exam. If you're approved pending audit, they will get back to you within uh, usually a couple of weeks and say, here's what I need from you. So you may need some documentation saying, okay, uh, what, it, what is the documentation um, and making sure that, you know, if you go to class, maybe you get a certificate of completion, they will want to see that. If you're on a project, they may want to at least some type of, um, see some type of project listing or plan. So they'll tell you what they need from you. Now, don't freak out if you're approved pending an audit because sometimes the audit is talking about oh something doesn't look right here okay then you got to fix it they're pretty pretty easy around that the other time you're audited is your number is up 
it's just like if you've gone through um, the lines at the um, airport, which I've done a lot of flying lately, you get in line and all of a sudden it beeps. Not because there's anything that you have that you shouldn't have. It's just because your number's up. <laughs> it's like, okay, now you get to have the full exam, right? You, you've got to do that and go through the other line instead of just the, the normal line. And, and again, it's just random. So don't totally freak out on pending audit. It could be maybe that they have a question about something, but then maybe you just set your numbers up and they have to um, audit it every so often. So thinking about that. Uh, certainly number two is diving into the BA Bach guide. So you want to get that. Uh, some people like digital copies. Some people like um, printed copies. You can go to Amazon and get it. It's kind of easy. Um, so as you dive down, allocate dedicated study time. You know, okay, I'm going to study Saturdays and Sundays, or I'm going to study during lunchtime every day or whatever, what, however it works for you. Uh, and understand the BA box structure, start with the introduction in the BA box. So this is how you read it. Start with the introduction, learn what it's about, then go into the knowledge areas and then practice applying the concepts and think to yourself, because this is very much a scenario-based exam. Think about, hmm, how would I real use that in real life? because they will give you a little scenario, real life examples, and they say, okay, now what are you gonna do? So start thinking about, okay, not only understanding what a task is or what a technique is, but how would you apply it? Then um, certainly review the techniques and competencies, take a break, kind of reflect on, on what you need, because if you're just trying to suck it all in, it's a little daunting, I'm just gonna tell you. Um, practice a self-assessment. Um, how do you think you're doing? Um, review anything that you need and stay consistent. Stay, stick to your study schedule. I want to say a little bit about how it's structured as you read the BA Bach because it is important because people, it's just, it's so much and it's just a listing of listings of listings and you're going like, oh my gosh. If you can understand the structure of the BA Bach, it helps you in studying. So there's six knowledge areas. So you have six of these, how they're grouped. And each knowledge area has some tasks. Generally, each knowledge area has five tasks, um, <clears throat> business analysis, um, and uh, design definition actually has six, and strategy analysis has four, but it doesn't, they all have tasks. So basically, it's oh, five tasks. Each of those tasks then have a purpose. What is the purpose of this task? Okay. Now, a task can be something you need to do. It can also be a process. So it, there, it's kind of weird how they use task, but it's things you need to do. So the, what is the purpose of it? A description, which takes a couple of sentence purpose and explores it out a little bit further, expands it. And then you look at what are the inputs into this task, which you you don't have to memorize, but you have to understand, you know, what what would you need before you do this task? Kind of like inputs and outputs to a process, right? What are the inputs? What are the things you need? And then there's certainly elements. Elements can be the steps in a process. It could be just things you need to know. And then any other guidelines or tools that you might be helpful to do the task, techniques you might want to use the stakeholders who may be involved in this task, and then the output at the end, which the outputs usually match the knowledge area. So it's kind of easier to remember those. What are the outputs? So just making sure that you understand how it's put together can help you assimilate the information in the box. So preparing for the big exam. <clears throat> Take a prep class. You know, it does help because the instructor, whoever you have, has also gone through the CBAP. It's not like the instructor hasn't done the test <clears throat> or CCBA. So they can give you little pointers. They can give you tips. Um, other students can share things that worked for them. So it's really kind of nice. Uh, join a study group. A lot of um, IIBA chapters have study groups that you can join. Um, I made my own study group. There was a, about three of us that were at the same time going for our certification. So every once in a while, we'd get together and kind of chit chat. And if there was a concept, somebody was 
No, if I wasn't getting, somebody else would say, well, Susan, kind of think about it like this. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. You know, so it's kind of nice to get other people's views, especially if you get stuck in a certain area. Uh, use study aids. Okay. And I will review watermark study aids, but you can make your own. You know, you can make your own flashcards just for the terms because they might use different terms than you're used to. You need to, not that you're going to get a term question, you know, what is, you know, X, X, Y, Z, and then you got to define the term. There's not going to be any of those. But if you have that term used in a scenario, basically the question, you need to understand how IIBA sees that term and not how maybe you use it in your organization. So uh, you can in individual study and create a study plan. I, I'm a great planner. Um, I'm also a PMP, <laughs> but um, it does help because if you have a plan, break it down. You know, it's like, okay, I'm going to do this knowledge area this time. I'm going to do this knowledge area, maybe break up the techniques. You might even want to, which I did some of the techniques at that time when I took the test, I didn't know. It's like, I've never done this. So I did more research on the internet to understand what that technique was. Why would I want to use it? When would I want to use it? How would I use it? You know, so it was very helpful to create a study plan. Practice exams. Now, Watermark certainly has a practice exam. It does come with the certification course, but you can also purchase it on its own if you want. So it's it gives you feedback. How well are you absorbing the information in the BA book? Okay. And some of it is going to be knowledge-based questions. And the reason we put knowledge-based questions in there is that getting, again, getting used to the terms and understanding the concepts and how they put together. There's also scenario-based questions, which you'll have on the exam and case study questions. But if you're averaging, I mean, it's tough. Sometimes people say our, our um, simulation questions are tougher than the real exam. 70% um, is about right. You know, if you feel if you feel like you got 70% right, you're probably pretty good at for the exam. Um, and then um, again, I, you can go to watermarklearning.com. You can buy the simulator, purchase the simulator access itself, or you can take a class and it comes free. Uh, these I'm not going to go too much into detail. Just want to let you know they're there. Again, you can go to uh, watermarklearning.com and you can purchase our study guide, which is Awesome. It takes the BA Bach, which is very dry, let me tell you, and it just, you know, bullet point by bullet point by bullet point. And, you, and it's it's great sleeping material because I would start reading it and fall right to sleep. <laughs> so it's not like edge of your seat reading, but the study guide was actually created by the two owners of Watermark Learning and they put it in real language. They take the box, same concepts, but they go, well, here's an example and here's why you would use it. And, and then they have fun little exercises sprinkled throughout. So it just, it takes the dry BA box with good material. I'm not saying it's not, it's really excellent material, but it's pretty dry and they, and they bring life to it. So you have that, you study tables. I love my favorite um, is just giving you an overview of how everything fits together. And is a summary of all, you know, the, the definitions and the purpose of all the techniques or the, or the task and the knowledge area. So it's big picture and it's broken down into different sections. You know, when would you use this technique? And then we'll list it and how would you use it in each different knowledge area or each different task? So it helps you going, you know, well, when, I, when would I do a process map? Well, you could do it when you're doing strategy analysis, you're doing current state, you could do it future state, you can do it, you know, and it'll give you examples because you want those examples because they're scenario-based questions. So they'll give you a situation. It's like, okay, what technique might you use in this situation? So the study tables help a lot. Flashcards, again, you can make your own, or we certainly have some if you don't have time, and we have the online simulator. So then you have to do a final prep, okay? So we've taught the CBAP since it's come out. So since probably 2000, maybe 2000, well, we got the, our, um, I would say between 2006, 2007, we've been teaching this. And so generally we found that students take about 100 hours of study time and usually about three months. Um, some people can do it in, in a couple months. Generally, two to three months is um, 
about, about the time that you're looking at. I have had people study in two weeks, but they had vacation and now that's all they did. They just ate, breathed, and lived that BA Bach. And then they were able to pass the exam. I also had students who said, oh, this shouldn't be a problem. They read through the BA box, studied for a week and took the exam and guess what? Sorry to say folks, they didn't pass and had to take it again. So you really do need to study. You really need to um, prepare. So, and then spend um, your, most of your time on the areas that aren't so familiar. Usually most, most of us as BAs, oh, I know how to list it. I can do an interview get the, understand the nuances of what, how they see the interview, but, you know, so I'm going to focus on things, maybe strategy analysis. I don't um, spend time there because by the time I'm assigned to a project, it's already, that part is already done. Okay. Then maybe I need to spend some more time there to get um, an understanding of it or solution evaluation is usually another section where um, BAs don't always, they can, but they don't always practice in that area. And of course, rest well. And if you rest well, test well. I know they always say that, get good sleep before you take the exam. Uh, I wanna know how they do that because when I'm gonna take an exam, I'm really nervous the night before. And I have a lot of them. I have a lot of certifications and I still get nervous. So it's like, I don't sleep that well. I'm thinking, okay, what should I answer this? And then, you know, so I'm going through my head, you know, thinking about stuff. So um, it is a good tip. I just haven't figured out how to do that yet. Okay, you got the exam. Once your application is approved, then you need to review the exam rules and system requirements. This is important. Uh, IIBA uses PSI testing center as their proctoring system. So be very comfortable in making sure that your system will work with their system because you'll have to get on. Um, and so make sure that your computer or laptop or whatever you're using meets all those system requirements. Now that's for if you're doing it um, virtually. You can also go to a testing center to take it if you'd prefer and not, not do it in, the, in your home or in the office. Um, certainly pay the exam fee. They always kind of like that because you can't take the exam without paying, paying the fee. Um, schedule it. You know, when, once you pay your fee, then you can schedule it and schedule in a time where you're most alert. Because my, my downtime is about two in the afternoon. I would never take my, my exam in the afternoon because I'm, I'm just kind of down. I mean, even if I don't fall asleep, it's just like, oh. So I take it right in the morning when I'm brush or even in the evening when I get my second wind, but I wouldn't take it in the afternoon. So kind of figure that out. And the nice thing is, is you get... Um, one year to take the exam. Now, I would say take it in two to three months while you still have energy and motivation, but you do have a year. I've had some students take it the week before their um, application expires, and that's just putting too much stress on myself. I put enough on myself. I don't need to do that either. So just kind of a thought. Um, just kind of a focus. The, what does the exam look like? CBAP is case study-based. Um, which you have a read a case study, and then there will be scenario questions or general questions underneath that. CCB is scenario based. Here you are a BA. Here's the situation. What would you do first? What would you do next? What techniques would you suggest using to accommodate that situation? So there are more situational questions. CBAP is a case study, and then four to five. Maybe there might be only three questions around situations. Multiple choice, though. Yay, A, B, C, or D. Always, if you don't know the answer, guess. Um, number of questions, because you have a case study to read, they lessen the questions by 10. For CBAP, 3.5 hours you get, <coughs> excuse me, and 130 for three hours. Um, here are the blueprint for the core certifications, and I just want to go through this quickly. The numbers behind each one of these like one, this is the chapters. This is chapter one, chapter two, chapter nine, chapter 10. And the knowledge areas are three through eight. Here are the questions you can expect in each chapter. This is actually from IIBA. Now you'll notice it's like, oh, because I've had people do this. Oh, I don't need to need to 
have anything in chapter one, two, nine, or 10, because it says NA, don't have to worry about it. I just have to study this. Uh uh. What they've done is they've taken this information and put it into the questions themselves. So these 42 questions around requirements analysis and design definition include techniques, include competencies, but they just couldn't split it out that way because if you remember, you got a case study and you might have three, four questions. Three, four questions could come from different, different things. So make sure you study techniques. There's lots and lots of questions on techniques. Know your techniques well. Underlying competencies, I would say, just learn it. Uh, most of it makes sense. You know, um, it's not any rocket science stuff. So just learn it and appreciate what how they're coming from. So I would just, you know, read this for more of um, comprehension and understanding, but don't spend a lot of time there because pretty much you can probably figure it out in the exam. Techniques you will need to know. You even need to know how to read them. They'll give you a ERD diagram and any relationship diagram, and they'll ask you four questions around that, or they'll give you a use case diagram and four questions how to read that. So you do need to know and understand how to read those um, models that they, they have covered. And then on exam, eat nourishing breakfast or meal if you can. <laughs> do something that relaxes you. Deep, deep breaths, deep breaths, okay? Um, find a quiet place. You cannot be interrupted. If you are interrupted during the exam, they'll cancel the exam. So making sure that you meet all the requirements. Uh, there is also a download on what you need to do, know for the PSI exam. If you're taking it virtual, download that. Uh, you are allowed pen and paper. You got to show the paper in the camera. Oh, it's a blank piece of paper. And then you have to rip it up after you're done. <laughs> but um, you're, you're, and you are allowed a glass of water, um, but it has to be in a clear glass so they can make sure that there's no writing on anything. So, um, and you are allowed a, a bio break, but that's the time keeps ticking, you know? Um, so go fast if you need to, but I would suggest not drinking anything. Um, so at the end of the exam, right? When you take the end, it's, you know, you finished all your questions. You said, okay, boom, here. They'll, t they'll tell you right away whether you passed or you didn't pass. If you passed a day later or two days later, I don't remember what it is, but they'll, they'll say, oh, congratulations, da 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 And um, you can go to IIBA to find out more details because then it'll be by knowledge area. It's like, okay, we had um, strategy analysis, you had 50, there's 15 questions, you got five right or whatever. So the, no, I don't think in this case, it's already different exam. They'll say higher or um, comparable or lower than the average. So they don't give you too much information. But, and if you don't pass, don't give up. You get three times to do this, three times. So if you, if you don't pass it the first time, a lot of times people get maybe test anxiety, try it again. Now, if you take a CBAP or CCBA certification with us, you don't pass. You can take, take an, an additional class for free. So just kind of wanted to know that. Anyway, testing tips. Don't dwell. Skip the hard ones. Mark them, though, so you can come back to them. You know, what I do, though, is I don't skip them. I do my first guess. And then I flag it so I can come back later and say, hmm, was I really right? So I usually try and answer because if my time runs out, at least I have something. And I have 25% chance getting it right by picking something. Uh, don't change your right answer wrong. I've seen that so many times. So don't second guess yourself. You, the first, first answer is going to be from your gut, you know, things that you just know. And then you start analyzing too much. And oftentimes we change the right answer wrong. So make sure that you, if you're changing it, you're really right. Uh, guess if you must, it's better than not, because otherwise you'll get it wrong. Um, and so uh, tips is read the scenario carefully. I What I do is I read it, read all the answers, so I kind of know where they're pointing to, and then I go back to the question and say, now what are you really asking? Because sometimes the questions have junk in them. Now you don't have anything to do with the answer. So I read it, read all the answers, A, B, C, and D. And then I'll go back up to the question and say, okay, what are you really asking? So I make sure I pick this, the right one. Same thing with the case study. Read the case study. Read each question carefully. All the answers 
Go back to the question, see if you can answer it. If you can't, you may have to go back to the case study. Uh, re once you pass, yay! Uh, recertification, you do have to do recertification for CBAP and CCBA, I'm sorry to say. You got 60 CDUs, they're called CDUs, for every three years. Suggestion, aim for 20. I do 20 each year so that I'm not a week before recertifying. I have to get 60. It's like, oh my gosh, I got 60, uh, get 60 CDUs. I don't, I don't want that pressure. Plus the fact that if you don't, you lose your certification. And I don't want to go through that exam again. So I kind of pay attention to that. I, put, I even put a post-it note on my uh, monitor and saying, okay, <laughs> here's when it's due and, and here's what you have so far. Um, fun facts, just uh, really briefly, is that um, higher confidence, upskilling, helps to find a job. We talked about that. You can earn more. Uh, according to the survey, this was a survey created by IIBA, you earn 25% more for certifications. Usually get uh, the benefits quite early. And most people would recommend a certification. Another quick fun fact, look at, look at this is from 2020. You know, this is kind of when the COVID started. But um, CBAPs have doubled in less than four years because this was July and this is January. It's doubled. Um, almost doubled for CCBA. It's not quite as popular. And of course, the ECBA is really popular, um, really quadrupled there. And then there's, this is just a quick, specialty certifications, but just wanted to point out that it, it is gaining steam. Uh, five ways we can help register for our certification classes. Uh, check out our materials, access the practice exams, download, we got free templates. Go go to www.watermarklearning.com, get those free templates. Uh, join us for any upcoming events. And before I leave you go, we actually have a 30% discount bundle offer when you purchase a class from us. So in that bundle, you can see where it's a lot cheaper. The exam is a lot cheaper. And in that bundle, because you get 35% off both the application fee and the exam fee, plus a one-year membership to IIBA, a free local membership to an IBA chapter. So I, I belong to uh, the Minneapolis uh, chapter. So that's always kind of nice. So free membership with your one-year membership to IIBA. Then if you're a member of IIBA, you get all the resources. You can download the BA box for free. They have career um, listings, job listings, postings. I mean, just some great resources. It's kind of worth it. And plus you get a break on your pricing. So that's always nice. Um, and here I've listed some upcoming certification prep classes. And I know I was supposed to be done in half an hour. So thank you for bearing. Uh, with me, I'm eight minutes late, but any questions, uh, Mariella? Absolutely. It looks like we do have one here. Is there a benefit to pursuing both the PMP and the C, uh, CBAB or the CBAB? Yeah. I think is there a lot of overlap between the bodies of knowledge? Well, the focus is different. I have both actually. Um, I am a PMP and CBAP. Uh, the focus, of course, on um, PMP is project management, and the focus of um, the CBAP is business analysis. Now, there's a PBA that PMI, there's too many acronyms, Project Management Institute also has a BA certification, but that's more of a BA certification for project managers who also do BA work. So it's, it's like business analysis light, versus the CBAP, that is a core business analysis certification. Any others? Fantastic. And then we have a couple of thank yous here. So I believe that might be it. I'll I'll go ahead and um, go over some last minute um, points if anyone wants to throw in a last minute question. But um, if you guys need any more information on uh, getting ready for CBAP or CBBA, um, please do not be afraid to visit us at uh, watermarklearning.com. And if you missed out on any of this session, we, we, we will be sharing um, a recording with all of you in an email after the webinar. So other than, oh, we have one more. 
Um, is it the case that the uh, BA Bach is changing? Thanks. You know, there's rumors about that all the time. No, we, we actually are a um, I, um, provider, key provider, I would say, premier provider with IIBA. So I talk to them usually on a monthly basis. And because uh, I asked that, it's like, well, there's rumors that the BA Bach is changing. No, it's not. They're thinking about changing some of the ECBA exam questions, but the BA Bach will not be changing. So, the, I, and I've asked them a number of times because like, well, there's rumors out there. Nope, they're not. At least nothing that um, they're thinking about. So. Awesome. I think that's perfect info, especially after um, following the session pretty closely. So, all right. Looks like that was our last question. So thank you all right. again. Have a great day, everyone. Absolutely. Thank you all so much for joining us and we'll see you soon. Bye.